Let's start by saying I'm a massive Uncharted fan. It's my favorite video game franchise. I platinumed all the games and I have like over 3000 hours or more played across PS3 to PS5. So you can say that I have some knowledge of the series. Sony now created PlayStation Productions, a studio that will be focused on making movie adaptations of the most popular video game franchises, starting with Uncharted. In this video I'll be discussing the characters, the plot and some technical aspects, while spoiling the movie and some elements from the games. Before we start talking about the movie, I'll give you a brief summary of the games. Uncharted is a third-person action-adventure game developed by Naughty Dog, where you play as the charismatic treasure hunter Nathan Drake. During your playthrough you'll be searching for a lost treasure while shooting your way through an army hired by the main villain. The gameplay is fun and fast-paced, you can also gain advantage over enemies by climbing and in the fourth game swinging with your grappling hook. You go on your adventure with the help of Nate's companions, mainly Victor Sullivan and Elena Fisher. In the games there are many great set pieces, like the train sequence in Uncharted 2, the plane in Uncharted 3 and the convoy chase in Uncharted 4. They are intense and fun. To me one of the best things in the games is the character moments between the gang. The cast is very well written and during the course of the games the relationships evolve naturally. For example, Nathan meets the journalist Elaine in Uncharted 1 while uncovering the coffin of Sir Francis Drake and they end up marrying in Uncharted 4, starting a normal life. The games also have a great story with many cool twists and turns, especially surrounding the treasure. So you can see that doing a movie wouldn't be difficult, all the pieces are set for a great character driven adventure. But unfortunately, that's not the case. When I saw the cast of the movie and watched the first trailer, I was convinced that the movie will be a bad adaptation of the games. And now, after watching the movie, I can honestly say that I was right. The story didn't work and didn't have a satisfying ending. The characters were the biggest mistake of the film, and that's saying a lot, since like I said previously, they were very well written in the games. Let's start with the main one, Nathan Drake played by Tom Holland. Nothing against him, but he was very miscast. I'm sorry, but I just can't see Tom Holland as Nate. He has a baby face and unfortunately he's doomed to only play angsty teenagers. Holland should stick to Spider-Man or similar roles. He failed to embody Nathan Drake. He came off as a more adult Peter Parker with his quirky and clumsy behavior. Rather than writing him as a capable and badass treasure hunter, the writers choose to make stupid decisions. For example, I find it very forced that to make him more of a mature character, there are many scenes where he's drinking alcohol and walking around shirtless in his house. I don't like that during the movie Drake is very emotional and every time he sees his brother's postcards or remembers him, he sheds a tear. In the games, Nate is a very tough guy. The only time he cries is after seeing his brother get shot and presumably dying during a prison escape which makes it more impactful for the player, as opposed to the movie where it happens frequently. Nate's partner Victor Sullivan, played by Mark Wahlberg, wasn't great either and looks too young to play the role. The movie didn't know what to do with him. At one time he's complaining about his bad ankle and how he needs glasses to read, but later on he's climbing and fighting bad guys with his fists effortlessly. Plus, I feel like they changed his whole character. The dynamic he has with Drake in the movie is more of a brotherly bond, reminiscent of Nate's older brother Sam in the fourth game. Rather than being a father figure and acting like old man Sully, a moral compass that guides Nathan during their adventures. Instead, in the movie he quips too much and sometimes gets a little annoying when it comes to desperately wanting the treasure, something that happens in the games but not to the extent of becoming annoying. To me, a character that was quite faithful to the source material was the treasure hunter Chloe Fraser, played by Sophia Ali. Not only did she look like Chloe but also acted like her. The decisions she makes during the movie are very in character. My only complaint with her is something I'll discuss when talking about the plot of the movie. Right away, as the film starts, you can see it's trying to copy Uncharted 2's opening. What I mean is, starting in the middle of a big set piece without any context. In the movie, Nate wakes up as he's hanging off a crate that's holding onto a cargo plane. Firstly, how and why did he fall asleep after falling off a plane? Secondly, I feel like there weren't any stakes or questions during the sequence. Compare that to Among Thieves, you get these tiny hints as to what led to the moment on the train. Drake wakes up confused as he sees he's bleeding, only to find out that his surroundings are vertical and realizing that the train he's in is hanging off a mountain on the verge of falling. That's how you create tension. Then we cut to a flashback of young Nate and Sam, very reminiscent of Uncharted 4. They're on some sort of museum looking for a map of the main treasure of the movie. The boys are caught and taken back to the orphanage. Sam then escapes and leaves the iconic ring of the games that belonged to Sir Francis Drake to his brother. 
The scene was good and the actors playing young Nathan and Sam were great. Their dynamic was nice and I liked that the film introduced Sam very early on, since some people thought his inclusion in the fourth game was forced. The scene that follows is a weird introduction to Nathan and Sully, showing how they meet for the first time on a random bar that Nathan works in, called Kitty Got Wet, a reference to a line that Drake's voice actor Nolan North improvised on set during the making of Uncharted 2. The moment they both meet is rushed and random. In the games the friendship forms naturally and has a great build-up, as Sully sees Nate's talented abilities and how bad his client Marlowe treated the boy when she was interrogating him about an important artifact. Then Victor pities him and helps the street kid escape. Later they team up to uncover the importance of Drake's ring and proceed to form a powerful bond as they both have big ambitions and Sully sees that they'll be able to accomplish great things together. Anyway, back to the movie. Sullivan convinces Nate to find the treasure by mentioning his past partnership with Sam and without hesitation he agrees. They need to get two crosses that act as keys that will help them find the treasure. Chloe has one and the other is being sold at an auction house. The heist sequence is almost identical to a thief's end, where Sully ends up bidding against the main villain to get Nate more time to turn off the power. We're then introduced to the main antagonist, Moncada, played by Antonio Banderas, and his partner Braddock, played by Tati Gabriel. The sequence was handled better in Uncharted 4, but here it was okay. Obviously the heist goes sideways, but the pair manage to get the cross and then they travel to Barcelona to meet Chloe Fraser. The team figure out where to go to find the clues. During this part we start to notice something between Nate and her. I would have liked a short romance between the two and more sexual tension, something that's present during the majority of Uncharted 2. In the movie it's not that clear as to what's their relationship status. I found the treasure hunting aspect of the movie quite boring. Normally I'm very into the parts of solving puzzles and figuring out stuff that's present in adventure movies. In the games it's fun to see Nathan and crew uncovering the secrets behind the treasure. But here the uncovering part wasn't that interesting, everything seemed easy and the locations weren't cool, they felt very generic. When they are able to locate the area that will lead them to the next clue, Chloe betrays Nate and reveals to be working with Moncada. Shortly after, Sully finds him and tells him that during an adventure Sam was shot by Braddock. That information shocks Nathan since he didn't know the whereabouts of his brother. We now get to the scene that appeared in all the marketing material of the movie, the cargo plane set piece. Aboard the plane, Braddock betrays Moncada and kills him. She's basically the discount version of Nadine Ross, a badass female villain that leads an army and in the end, betrays the main villain. Somehow, off screen, Nate and Sully manage to get to the plane by hiding in Moncada's car. Nathan detaches the cargo to cause a distraction and it all starts hanging off the back of the plane, similarly to Uncharted 3. The scene doesn't obey the laws of physics at all and it looks terrible, with the CGI being very noticeable and everything feeling weightless. There's a moment during the cargo plane set piece where Tom Holland kicks a guy in the face and falls to his death, and he says something along the lines of, oh my god, I'm so sorry, Nate would never say something like that to a random enemy, rather something like, enjoy the ride down, asshole! Again, this bad characterization pisses me off. After successfully returning to the plane, he gets hit by Chloe that was driving Moncada's car, and this scene is ridiculously hilarious. They're both falling while glued to the top of the car just like Spider-Man. On the other hand, in the game, the sequence is awesome as the plane starts breaking down after a fire starts on the inside and Nathan is thrown out of it by the intense wind but manages to grab onto a crate and ends up surviving the landing. In the movie, they both survive the fall just like the game with the crate's help. When they land near a tourist beach, we get a short and sweet cameo from Nolan North with the Uncharted theme humming in the background. It was cool to see him on the big screen, honoring the work he's done playing the character. Back at a hotel, Nate is able to pinpoint the treasure's location using both crosses, but since he doesn't trust Chloe to go with him, he leaves her fake coordinates. The thing I don't like is that she falls for it. Her character is very smart in the games and is always one step ahead of everyone, including Drake when it comes to treasure hunting, so trusting those coordinates is somewhat out of character. But anyway. Nathan finds the gold that's inside two pirate ships in a big cave surrounded by water, resembling the setting of the final chapter of Uncharted 4. Sully then appears out of nowhere after managing to track him down using his phone and soon they're ambushed by Braddock's men. Something very cool in the Uncharted games are the twists surrounding the treasure. Often in the beginning the team has an idea of what the treasure will be but during the course of the story things are not what it seems. It would have been nice if in the movie the treasure wasn't just gold, but I don't know, like if there was a curse or some supernatural thing guarding it. That would have enhanced the plot and make it more interesting. 
The finale looked ridiculous. Two helicopters start lifting each massive ship, mind you that they are filled with tons of gold. And the final battle takes place on the deck of both ships as Braddock's goons fight Nathan and Sullivan. Again, the CGI during this set piece is bad and there is no tension. The look of this scene must have been inspired by the big final combat showdown in Uncharted 4, like the usage of the pirate ships and explosions, but in the games it's much more exciting and intense. Back to the movie, Sully then manages to hijack a helicopter and Nate fires a cannon to destroy the other one. Braddock herself joins the fight lowering the ship's anchor to stop the helicopter. Drake climbs the mast to get to the helicopter and Victor has a tough choice to make, letting go of the pirate ship and losing the gold or saving Nate. He chooses to save his partner and throws his bag full of gold on Braddock's face. She then gets brutally crushed by the falling pirate ship. Oof, what a way to go. The movie ends with Drake thanking Sully and showing some gold he grabbed before the ambush and then the pair flying to the sunset. Before the credits, we cut to a mysterious prison where we see Sam writing a postcard to Nate, signaling that he's alive. I assume he'll return in the next movie. The post credit scene teases the events of Drake's fortune, as Nathan is negotiating with a guy and asking him about Gabriel Roman, the main villain of the first game. Sully then shows up supporting his classic and iconic mustache, they're both wearing their Uncharted 3 flashback outfits. After the pair escape, they are caught by someone off screen. I have a feeling that's Eddie Raja, the secondary villain of Uncharted 1, based on how Drake reacted. If you ask me, it's kind of stupid that Sully earned his mustache at the end credit scene. I hate when movies do this kind of thing to something simple that's established in the source material. Plus, why couldn't he just have the mustache from the get-go? Like I said at the start of the video, the movie left me frustrated. The plot wasn't as nuanced as the games, the characters were characterized wrong and the performances were mediocre. Not to mention, the movie barely has any shootouts. Nathan literally just fires a gun once, misses and doesn't kill the enemy. The only one that uses a gun effectively is Chad Chloe and she kills a couple of guys. But of course, can't have Peter Parker killing people even though that's the main part of gameplay. The film also lacks climbing sections, a mechanic that's present abundantly in all the games. The villains weren't memorable. Moncada's motivation to find the treasure was to get rich himself since his father was selling everything to the highest bidder and the crosses belonged to the Moncada family, so he thinks that's his right to have them. Braddock, on the other hand, well, she's just your average mercenary with no goals or ambitions. Even Marlowe and Talbot, who to me are the worst villains of the series, are more interesting than those two. Technically speaking, the movie was generic. None of the shots were memorable. Of course I wasn't expecting Greg Frazier levels of cinematography, but still, at least make the film beautiful to look at. Like I mentioned previously, the effects were bad and looked fake, with everything lacking weight. The soundtrack was also generic, and not as memorable as the games. They could have hired Greg Edmondson, the composer of the trilogy, or Henry Jackman, who composed the fourth game, not to mention the lack of the classic Uncharted theme. It only plays twice and it's very subtle, it should have been bombastic and awesome. It seemed like they were scared of using it. Something that bothered me was the humor. Most jokes didn't land and they often try to go with the classic bad MCU humor, where it ruins a cool or emotional moment. In contrast, the humor present in the games is clever, actually funny and the delivery is excellent. The pacing wasn't that great either. Even though the movie is shorter than 2 hours, most of the time it drags a bit, making it feel longer than its runtime. A thing that irritates me is that in most common blockbusters nowadays, the characters are oddly clean throughout the movie. Even though they're running, swimming, their clothes are fresh out of the dryer. Comparing this movie to, for example, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where Indy at the end is beaten up, dirty and sweaty. In the Uncharted movie, it all looks fake. Not only that, but even in the games near the end, Nate is bruised and covered in mud. The film lacked great vistas and exotic locations. Most scenes took place in boring looking cities and in enclosed areas. In the source material, when the group arrives at the location of the treasure, you're always greeted with a big and impressive lost city as the camera reveals the place. I miss that sense of wonder and excitement during the movie. It seems like there will be a sequel based on the post credit scene and its success at the box office. I think that they can make a great adaptation if they follow the story of the first game, which it seems like they will to some extent. Sony needs to find a new director and new writers, have Amy Hennig, the director of the first three games, oversee production. It was sweet that during the credits they gave a special thanks to her. I hope that they nail the casting of the next one, especially with Elena Fisher, since she's a very important character and a key player in Nathan's life, but I don't know, I have a feeling that they'll cast Zendaya based on her relationship with Tom Holland in real life. 
Even though I didn't like the movie, there were some positives. Like I said, Sofia Ali as Chloe was a highlight. Her absence was felt in the finale since the scenes with her were entertaining and she was the only one that used the gun, making her a valuable ally in the final battle, but she was written out of the movie before that, so yeah. The post credit scene was one of the only scenes during the present that had an uncharted feel to it, not only visually with the accurate clothes, but also with the dynamic between Wahlberg and Holland, which seemed more in line with the games, but still not quite there. In conclusion, the movie wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but it wasn't as great as it should have been. It was a good effort by Sony and PlayStation Productions to adapt one of the most popular video game franchises. I hope they succeed next time, and that the sequel to the Uncharted movie follows the source material more closely. I'm kind of excited to see what they'll do in the next PlayStation Productions project, the The Last of Us HBO show. From the things I've heard and read, it seems it will be quite faithful to the game and the cast sounds promising. Not to mention, Naughty Dog is somewhat involved in the making of the series, in the form of Neil Druckmann, the director of both games. It's cool that the film introduced the Uncharted franchise to the average moviegoer, and it can push people to buy and experience these amazing games. But even with that, this first adaptation was an insult to the fans.